All right, kids, this is the last significant section of Unit 6, uh, Section 610, Integrating with Long Division and Completing the Square. These are methods and, and tactics that you learned back in Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc. So we're going to be resurrecting some of your old um, applications to be able to do our integration, our calculus part. So completing the square and long division are two skills that help us manipulate the integrand until it becomes something we can work with. We're practicing those two skills in this lesson. So if you look at this first question, like you can't use u substitution. You would pick the harder thing to be your u, which would give you a 9x squared. There's no way. It's just not going to fit. The pieces of that puzzle won't fit together. Um, by the way, these next two sections, the videos should not be an hour long like the last couple were. So hopefully we won't be quite as, as long-winded for this one. But anyway, so here's a trick you can use. Look at this. How would you possibly integrate this? You can't, um, sometimes we saw where you could divide 3x cubed divided by, but this has a binomial, not a monomial in the bottom. You can only do that division trick, like individually dividing the pieces if it's a monomial, a single piece in the bottom. So you can't do that, you're stuck. But here's what you can do, and it's kind of cool. You can use either synthetic division or long division. Now I'm gonna try synthetic division with this one. On the video, he did both long division and synthetic division, but um, I'm just gonna show you the synthetic. The reason I'm choosing synthetic is because I can easily take this thing and solve x minus two equals zero. I'll put it in the margin x minus 2 equals 0 gives me x equals 2. Well, that's the value that you put outside of the synthetic division doohickey, 2. And then it's like an upside down thing. This will come back to you. I'm just, this is as you see it. Then I take the coefficients from my numerator. Uh, I have a 3x cubed. By the way, I need to make sure all powers are represented because if they're not, I need to put a 0 in for them. So I have a cube, a square, an x, and a 1. That's cool. Just take the coefficients. 3, negative 1, negative 5, and positive 1. So you drop the 3. That's the first thing. So you drop this first guy, whatever it is, and then you multiply. 2 times 3 is 6. And then you add. Negative 1 plus 6 is 5. And then you do it again. 2 times 5 is 10, it goes here. Negative 5 plus 10 is 5 again. 2 times 5 is 10, it goes here. And that gives me an 11. And so what does that actually mean? And so it's actually the polynomial of 3, one less power than this, so x squared, plus 5x plus 5, with a remainder of 11. So let me show you how that looks in our integral. We're going to put it into the calculus now. I have a 3x squared plus 5x plus 5, but the remainder I put as 11 over the divisor of x minus 2 with respect to x. And so what I've done is I've taken this really ugly integral and I've changed the way it looks so that I don't have that crazy division thing going on. Now think about how that integral is going to go. If I look at this, right, you raise, take the integrate, integrate each piece, take the antiderivative of each piece, 3x to one more power over 3, over that power, plus 5x squared over 2, plus 5x, and then you get to this mess down here. And I'm going to write it this way just for now. I'm going to do this one kind of the long way, but you'll see the trick to this in just a second. If I have an integral of something with a constant up top and an x in the denominator, x to the first that is, all that is is an ln. And so here's how this guy's going to actually look. He's going to be 11 ln of x minus 2 whatever that denominator is. If this was 1 over x, then it would be the ln of, of x, right? This is x minus 2, ln of x minus 2, but the 11 comes down in front. So it's 11 times the ln of x minus 2. Let me plug in the rest of this and simplify it. Uh, threes cancel for this guy, so he's going to be an x cubed. 
you can't really fix the next one. 5x squared over 2, and I've got a plus 5x. And then this guy, what else am I missing? Plus C. And there's synthetic division in the midst of these questions and how you can use it to simplify it. And then you see that taking the integr integral is really not that hard. So sometimes synthetic division, long division might be helpful. And there's an example where it is. Okay, second one. This one, I have a fourth, a cube, a square, and x. I don't have a number, so I'm gonna have to put in a zero placeholder for the number. And I'm dividing by three x minus five. This one's easier to do with uh, long division, and the reason why is if I take 3x minus 5, set it equal to 0, I'll get 5 thirds. So 5 thirds would be this number out in front, and sometimes these can get kind of messy. So I would choose long division for this one. I want to show you and remind you how long division goes. I know I taught this to you, what, three years ago, something like that. All right, so here it is. 3x minus 5 is the divisor. The dividend, ooh, all these good math words. 6x to the 4th minus 7x cubed plus x squared plus 2x plus 0. And then you take the first pieces. 6x to the 4th divided by 3x, well that's 2x cubed. So 2x cubed goes on top. And then you multiply the 2x cubed through the divisor. 2x cubed times 3x is 6x to the 4th. 2x cubed times negative 5 is negative 10x cubed. All right, we did this one, you, you're going to remember, when we did this, we did this with colored pencils, because then we have to change the signs. So 6x to the 4th minus 6x to the 4th cancels. They always should. If they don't cancel, then you've done something wrong. Negative 7x cubed plus 10x cubed gives me 3x cubed. Bring down the next guy. And then you start the process all over again. 3x cubed divided by 3x is x squared. It goes up top. Multiply x squared by the divisor. x squared times 3x is 3x cubed. x squared times negative 5 is negative 5x squared. Change the signs, color pencils. The cubes cancel, and I really have 6x squared. I'm not going to have room to do the integral once I get done this. All right, bring down the plus 2x. Divide again. 6x squared divided by 3x is 2x plus 2x. Multiply it through. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. Change up those signs. Minus and plus. X squareds cancel, and I have 12x's plus 0. 12x divided by 3x is 4. Gives me minus 20. All right, oh, this is a minus, this is a plus, and so I have a remainder of 20. <clears throat> So what does that mean as an integral? Uh, let me put it up this way. Plus 20 divided by 3x minus 5. So let's put it together in my integral. My new integral, new and improved, is the integral of 2x cubed, my answer up top, plus x squared plus 2x plus 4 plus 20 over 3x minus 5 with respect to x. All right, and we need to integrate each piece. And so as I integrate each piece, I have, uh, raise it to one more power. I'm looking at my space. <laughs> I don't have much left. But I, I might go left, we'll see. Um, 2x to the 4th over 4. 2x to the 4th over 4, there's my first one. Plus x cubed over 3. 
plus 2x squared over 2 plus 4x plus, here's your ln trick, 20 ln of 3x minus 5. But guess what? There's an extra step to this guy. See how this one over here was just an x? Because this has a coefficient of 3, and you're taking the integral, instead of multiplying by 3 like you would with a derivative, you literally have to divide that by 3. And then I need a plus c, but we're going to talk about that in a second. All right, I'm going to go left to put my prettiest answer together on this whole thing. If I have x to the fourth, 2x to the fourth over 4, I really have um, x to the fourth over 2. If I have, I can't do anything with this guy, he's, so he's a plus x cubed over 3. And then I have the 2's cancel in here, so I have plus x squared. And then I have plus a 4x. And then I have my whole ln mess here, plus 20 ln of 3x minus 5, jeez Louise, over 3, and then I need my plus c. Maybe I should have done it on another piece of paper, right? <laughs> Hopefully you can see it. All right. So there it is, long division from back in the day, synthetic division from back in the day, and how it's helpful to us to find integrals. Once you can uh, simplify this so that they're single pieces, it's pretty simple to take that integral and, and have it work. So the next thing they want to remind you of is using completing the square. Now look at this next guy. Again, you can't use use substitution, you can't use any of the things you've thought about before, but here's what you can do. You can, you can look at this thing and think about completing the squares. It's something that factors. And directly factoring? No, it doesn't. I don't have two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 6, and I'm surely not using quadratic formula to be able to get this any better. So if you remember completing the square, I hope you learned this in Algebra 2. What you have is you're going to take the denominator you've got, x squared plus 6x plus 10, and you're going to set it up like this. This is how you complete the square. x squared plus 6x, take the first two terms, leave a blank, and then uh, put this number on the other side of the equal sign. Now he did it a little differently in the video, but this is how I always do have done this. So you take a positive 10, you're swinging it over the equal sign, so it's going to be a negative 10. And then here's what you do. you got to take this term here, I'm going to put it off to the margin, to get what you're putting in the blank, and this one gets a blank too. Both of these are pluses, by the way, plus whatever's in the blank. You have to take half the middle term, and you have to square it. That's how you get the number that fits in the blank. My middle term is 6. If I take half of it, it's 3. 3 squared is 9. So I put a 9 here, I put a 9 there. Algebra balance makes me have to do whatever I do to the left, I have to do to the right. So uh, that's where this is coming from. And the whole idea of doing this is so that you can get into a, a grouping x plus 3 quantity squared equals negative 1. You want it to be into a grouping that's squared, completing the square. There you go. That's the whole point of this whole thing. So really what I have in my denominator, if I put it all on the same side, now we'll go back to my calculus here, I have 1 over x plus 3 quantity squared, and then bring this over, plus 1, with respect to x. And so this takes me back to a couple sections ago when I was completing the square. Whatever's in parentheses, I can let be my u. That's x plus 3. Take the derivative. Derivative of x is 1. Derivative of 3 is 0, so it's just a dx. Let's see if we can plug it in with my u's. Now, I don't have bounds, so I'm going to use the plus c method. But I've got u squared, 1 over u squared, plus 1. 
and you should be saying, oh, bells and whistles and all that stuff. Look at that. That's an inverse trig function. That's an inverse tangent. So really what this equals is the tangent to the negative 1 of u plus c. What's u? u is x plus 3. Tangent to the negative 1 of x plus 3. I know I'm off my screen. Hang on a minute, and I will move it up. Plus c. There it is. So we used completing the square to put it in a different form that then let us be able to take the integral. We're going to do the same thing with number 4. The only thing with number 4 that's messy, well, first of all, it's a square root denominator, but the second thing that's messy is the negative sign. That just, uh, you can't play that game. That's just horrible. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the algebra games first, just like we did here, and then put it back into the integral. This one we're looking at, I'm going to factor out the negative 1. I'm looking at x squared. Yes, I know it's in a square root. We'll come back to that. Um, if I factor out a negative 1, then this is minus 8x plus whatever this is equals 15 is negative. When it comes on the other side of the equal sign, it's positive. And then plus whatever this guy's going to be. There's the setup, completing the square. Take half the middle term, negative 4, square it, positive 16. But really, is this a plus 16 on the left? It's really negative 1 times 16. It's really a negative 16. So I took negative 16 to this side. I have to take negative 16 to this side. Whatever you do to the left, you've got to do the same thing to the right. So here's what it looks like, negative 1, parentheses. My grouping is going to be x minus 4 quantity squared equals negative 1. All right, so when I put this together back into my integral, 1 over negative 1 x minus 4 squared, bring the 1 over, plus 1. Now I know this is a little messy, but see if you can follow me here oh, with respect to x. <clears throat> it would be the same thing as the integral, 1 over, love that numerator, 1, right? Um, By the way, I think I forgot to put the square root in there, didn't I? Yeah, I did. There it is. It would be the same thing as a big old square root. But instead of it write, writing it this way, what if I wrote it this way? 1 minus x minus 4 quantity squared. Are they equivalent? It's a positive 1, yep. It's a negative grouping, yep, with respect to x. So who has an integral that looks like this? A square root in the bottom, 1, 1, and something being squared. And you say, whoo, sine, inverse sine, sine to the negative 1 of x minus 4 plus c divided by 1, the coefficient on the x, so I don't really need it. If this were a 3 or something like that, like we saw up above, then you get to divide by that value. But there's no coefficient on that x, so it's just a 1. And there you go. That's your final best answer for that guy. All right, one more. That's an example problem before we do a couple practices. This is number five. Um... We're going to ignore that 32 up top for the moment, and we're going to do the whole completing the square thing on the bottom. Again, you know you need to do that because uh, there are no factors of 20 that add up to be a negative 4. It's just not going to work up for you. So I have my bottom. Just look at my algebra game here. x squared minus 4x plus something equals negative 20. You brought it over plus something. <clears throat> Take half the middle term and square it. Half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative score, 
<laughs> making up new words. Negative 4 squared is plus 4, plus 4. And so I get x minus 2 quantity squared uh, equals negative 16. I would probably, as I do this, this is like 32 times, this would be the same thing, let me just show you. This would be 32 times 1 over your denominator. What can you do with that 32? 32 can go out in front of your integral. So I could have 32 in the front, and then the integral of 1 over my denominator I just got from my completing the square. x minus 2 squared, bring the 16 over to be plus 16. dx. Well, if I look at this, um, um, look at. I want this to be. This kind of is like um, an inverse tangent. It's x squared plus one is what it needs to be. How can I turn this into a 1? And I know this is kind of weird, and you're probably not going to necessarily know the answer, but watch when you see. If I take everybody, and I multiply everybody, every single piece, there's three pieces in my integral, 1, 2, 3. If I take everybody, and I multiply them by 1 over 16, I'll put it in parentheses. What would that make this then look like? So I have the 32 that's out there. I have an integral. 1 over 1 times 1 over 16 is 1 over 16. And then in the bottom I've got 1 over 16 times x minus 2 quantity squared. But now I have a plus 1. Um, I can't just cancel directly the 1 over 16's, but this one can come out. I know this is complicated. If I take 32 two times 1 over 16 on the outside, that makes me have 1 over 1 over 16 x minus 2 plus 1 quantity squared. And as I look at that, this is an inverse tangent thing. I'm looking at how I did it on my, my, my notes, and it's not quite coming out the same. So that's my hesitation, as if you hear me kind of like thinking it through a little bit, that's what I'm thinking of. Um, here's what this the problem is this and I, I can explain how this is going the problem is this guy because that takes it away from being the inverse tangent that I want it to be inverse tangent says 1 over x squared plus 1 I'm dividing by 1 over 16 in this case so if I wanted to bring this coefficient out if I'm dividing by 1 over 16, I'm actually multiplying by 16 over 1. And then you can see your 16's end up canceling each other out. So here's where I'm really at. I'm at 32 on the outside, and inside I've got 1 over the group x minus 2, quantity squared plus 1. That's the inverse tangent, so it's 32 tangent to the negative 1 of x minus 2. And then I need my plus C, and that's your final answer. Woo! That was a journey. But that's the correct answer. It is all correct. We're all good. All right, I picked a few practice problems to do. The first one I wanted to do is number five. 
So if you flippy do the page, we're going to look at number five. And I see this and I say, ooh, let's try completing the square. Here it is. I just worry about the algebra part. I'm going to put this whole thing back together again in a minute. So if I look at this, I want to factor out a negative 1. And that's going to leave me with x squared plus 8x plus something equals 7 plus something. Right, I move that 7 to the other side of the equal sign. Half of 8 is 4. 4 squared is 16. What I really did was subtracted 16 from that side, so I need to do the same thing here. What does this look like? Negative 1 times x plus 4 quantity squared equals negative 9. So when I put that into my integral, it will be 6 over the square root. Remember that this becomes a positive 9, if I rearrange it, minus x plus 4 quantity squared, when I put it to the same side of the equal sign. This would become positive 9, this stays negative. So here it is, square root. The whole idea is trying to get this into some kind of an inverse trig thing. So 9 minus x plus 4, quantity squared, with respect to x. I can pull that 6 out. I'm going to leave it inside this time around and see if it makes the process of this any better. In order for me to put this into a trig identity, this piece here needs to be a 1. Now that 9 is in a square root, so I need to multiply this guy by uh, inside the square root by 1 over 9. So each piece, if I need it to be a 1, this piece gets multiplied by 1 over 9, this piece gets multiplied by 1 over 9. But this piece here gets multiplied by 1 over the square root of 9, or 1 third. All right, we're going to try to simplify this thing and see where it goes. So the integral is 6 times 1 third is 2. My new numerator is 2. 9 times 1 ninth is 1. And this guy, if I divide, if I multiply it by 1 ninth and I want to put it in a squared grouping, watch what happens with this. See what you think of this. I would have, I don't want parentheses there, hang on. I would have x plus 4 over 3 what? Quantity squared. Because 3 squared is 9, and that's what I wanted. So you see I just manipulated that bottom just a bit to make that work. So if I look at this guy, if I have a square root on the bottom, let me actually, I'll take it one step further, 2, bring out my coefficient there, now I'm bringing it out, 1 over the square root of 1 minus the grouping of x plus 4 over 3 quantity squared, this square root of 1 minus whatever squared is going to be your inverse sine. So that's going to be 2 inverse sine of this whole hot mess. x plus 4 over 3, and then you need your plus c. Oh! One more piece. When I take when I take the next, see how this x has, it's um, x over 3, it's like a 1 third. Uh, I need to, instead of, I need to also um, divide by whatever that coefficient is on the x. So divided by 1 third, and then I need the plus c. If I'm dividing by 1 third, I'm really multiplying by 3. Whew, final best answer, 6, inverse sine of x plus 4 over 3, and then my plus c. There's my final best answer. I did almost forget that I needed to deal with that coefficient on the x, but there it is. That was number 5. My next one I choose is number 8. Number 8, I have choices of synthetic division or long division. I'm going long. 
Anytime there's a coefficient on the x, it's just easier. Because synthetic, you'd have to then divide every piece by that 5. It just it gets complicated. So if you have a coefficient on the x, just use long division. So here we go. I'm actually going to go in this box. i got double boxes I can use. 5x plus 7. Divided into, do I have everybody rep represented? Cube, square, x, number. 5x cubed plus 12x squared minus 38x minus 54. Here we go. Gosh, there's, there's Levi. Making friends. 5x cubed divided by 5x is just an x squared. x squared times 5x is 5x cubed. <laughs> and then x squared times 7 is x plus 7x squared. Oh my lord. Change of signs. Subtract it out. 12 minus 7 is 5. Oh, I don't know if I can get him out of the room. Let me see. Oh, he left. Hold on. Let me close the door. <laughs> we'll see if that works. All right, here we go. 5x squared divided by 5x is an x. All right, x times 5x is 5x squared. x times 7 is 7x. Change the signs. Negative, negative. These numbers get kind of big. I get negative 45 minus 54. Do it again. Negative 45x divided by 5x is negative 9. Negative 45x. Negative 9 times 7 is 63. Negative 63. Change up those signs. Positive, positive. And I end up with a final answer when I subtract a 9. Let's put the integral together. Here I am over here. So I have the integral of x squared plus x minus 9 plus 9 over 5x plus 7 with respect to x. And then I'm ready to try to come through and do my integral of each piece. Here it goes. Add a power on, divide by the power. Add a power on, divide by the power. Then we get to the lovely ending here. So he's going to be plus the 9, the numerator, ln of 5x plus 7. But remember, when you have a coefficient on the x, when you are integrating, you're dividing by that number instead of multiplying by it. Let's put that all over 5, put a plus c, and you are golden. Good to go. That's it. They were the only problems I had to do in that section. So I gave you a little flavor of completing the square, a little flavor of um, synthetic and long division and how they make it so much easier to find your integral. Kind of cool how you can put it into this and then it makes it like super simple. All right. Uh, shoot me any emails if you have questions and I'll see you in class. Bye.